Previously, I made the important distinction between typed and untyped programming languages. The key difference between them is whether they allow a certain kind of code, which I'll call ill-typed code. Consider this example, which is a distilled version of the bug from the last video. If n is greater than 13, then quotation marks to else n. We said that this code was ill-typed because quotation marks to is a string, whereas n is a number. So if you're computing a single value from this piece of code, that value will be a string if n is greater than 13 and a number otherwise. So there's no consistent type we can assign to this expression as a whole. We saw that if we allow this, it can cause bugs. If you assume that the output of this would be a number, then you're going to get strange behavior if n is ever greater than 13 because it'll actually be a string. The programming language Python is, in this sense, an untyped programming language because it allows this sort of thing. We saw that it was perfectly happy to let me write a program which sometimes returned a number and sometimes returned a string. Let me now contrast that with a typed programming language. Throughout the series, I hope to use a couple different examples of typed programming languages, and we've already seen one so far, Lean. But today I'm going to be using a language called Standard ML, which is a typed programming language. So here I'm interacting with SML in the terminal, and so I can do things like type in expressions like this and evaluate them. And so it tells me that 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. I can also do things like declare variables like this, so I can say val n is equal to 4, and then I can use those variables. So n plus 1 gives me 5. Pretty simple. Notice that it's printing out colon int after each of these expressions. That's not an accident, that's the typing. So int here stands for integer, so 6 and 4 and 5 are all integers. And I can also have compound expressions like an if then else. So if I calculate this expression, if n is greater than 13, then 2 else n, since n is 4, which is not greater than 13, it's going to give me n back, which is 4, instead of 2. If I set n to be 44, for example, then this will give me 2. Now let's type in our bug. If n is greater than 13, then quotation marks to else n. And so this is what a type error looks like. So notice that it complains. Uh, it says the types of if branches do not agree. So what that error message means is that this branch, the quotation marks to, is a string, and the n is an int, which is our number type, and so there are different types, and so it doesn't like that. Now notice that it doesn't matter whether n is greater than or equal to 13. It still refuses to compute this. I could even do if false, then quotation marks to else n. And so even though False is never going to be true, and so it's never going to go into this quotation marks to branch. It still does not type check and still does not allow it. So this is how a type programming language behaves. It allows us to input expressions, and if those expressions are well typed, like 3 plus 3, or if n is greater than 13, then number 2, else n, then it will perform the calculation but it knows how to spot an ill-typed expression and refuses to compute them, even if, in principle, it could. This leads us to the programming interpretation of hot. The types are the types of, of a typed programming language, like int or string. The terms are just well-typed expressions, and the typing judgment, little t colon big T, means the same thing it does in the programming language. The expression little t is well typed, and particular is of the type big T. 
We'll see more later how we can make sense of the computing part of this. For instance, the numeral 6 is a well-typed term of type int. The expression 3 plus 3 is also a well-typed term of type int. And there's an obvious relationship between these terms. 3 plus 3 is 6. Or more exactly, 3 plus 3 computes to 6. In the next video, we'll see how we can express the two terms are actually the same. But I promised you the type unit, so let's look at that. One thing you can do in languages like SML is have pairs of values. So I could do 4, 5, and it reports to me that that is a expression of type int star int. And I can do this with different types as well. So I can say hello and 2, and so that's string star int. I'll say more later about what this star operation is, but for now you can just think of it as the type of pairs of a string and an int. I can also have more things than just two. So I can have hello, there, and five, and that's a string string int. Or I can do three, seven, false, hello, and it has int, int, bool is the type of booleans, true or false, and then a string. And so on to my heart's content. But here's a funny thing. I can have zero tuples as well. If I just write a pair of parentheses with nothing between them, in the same way that a triple is three things paired together, three things listed between parentheses, this is zero things paired together. What does SML call this type? Unit. Unit is the type of zero tuples. And if you think about it, there's exactly one term of type unit. There it is. So that's why we call it unit, and why in hot we'll denote it with a boldface one, because there's exactly one term of that type. So I did this example in SML, but having a unit type is a pretty standard feature of typed programming languages like this. But why? Why is it helpful to have a type like this, which contains zero data? Isn't that useless? It turns out, no. If we're interested in actually doing programming, then there are a variety of circumstances where unit is exactly the type we need. But unit is also going to be incredibly important in hot. In fact, there's a good argument to be made that unit will be the most important type in hot. But it's going to take a while for me to tell you why. Before we get to that, let's talk about our other interpretations. Next up, homotopy. Thank you.